All right, what are we gonna do today? Well, still working on our bug spray, bug spray box cars. But right now, so I did a little acrylic coating over the decals, and we'll get to that in, like in the next video. So while we're waiting, remember when I said I had these green box cars? Got four of them. They're all pretty similar. And what I want to do is I want to do the step in the Citadel system called shading. Okay, some of you, you could relate this to somewhat to weathering, but we are not actually weathering. You could also relate it to if, if some of you do this, panel lining. But what we're going to do is we're going to shade this box car. And we're going to use the shade system. And I have found that once you shade, you can stop after that. You can call it good. You may be clear coated or something. It's like a varnish. If you remember the old Walther's DDV, it's similar to that. I, it's probably not as thick as that varnish, but it's like varnishing. And so what I've done is I have picked this step again, the Celia Green Shade, because I want the shade to be similar to the color that I'm using. Now there are other colors I could use, such as, this is the black version. Nullin oil. Or as they say, my friend, he's from he's from the Appalachian Mountains, he says Nullin Earl. Now I've seen regular guys using this on uh, on YouTube and girls and they call it Nuln oil. When I read it, it says Nullin to me, which tells me this is kind of a step in if you were doing a black panel liner or you did something, or if you're going to put over a really caboose red that's shiny, this would be your go-to step because this is this is a very this is like a black panel liner almost. So we're going to use the dark green one since we're going over green anyway. So let's get let's try it. Let's get started. All right. So now I know that I should be using my anti-spill thing because these pots as they call them they call citadel calls their paint containers pots their pots can be spilled as i have previously demonstrated we don't want to do that today and so i have to work on a, something first i need to button my cups so that i do not have to go through the spilt pot drill so let's let's get in it okay so i'm going to get some soaked on my brush here and i'm going to start on the roof because this is one of those things where you use gravity and i'm going to get it on there fast and thick i don't really want to go side to side but since i'm getting it on i'm just going to get it in place and then i'm going to go back and get my brush strokes going the right way we're going to do four at a time I want to hit all the edges. You know how there's a little, a little, uh, where the roof meets the side? I want to get it in there. I probably got enough, as you can see. It's all run to one side. So I'm going to flip it over and it'll start running the other way. Gives me a chance to get some on the ledge where the roof meets the side. And I want to try to get my brush strokes. so that they run with the roof. Okay, now I don't want to keep on brushing this till it sets up. What I want to do now, I'm going to let it run. I'm going to give it a little shake. See if I can get it to run. Okay, can you see the effect so far?
I gotta let gravity do its work. I gotta resist the urge to keep on brushing it. I'm gonna let it spread out. Now there's a little pool right here. That I don't really want to have happen. All right, now, that's one. We're going to leave this one. I'm going to resist the urge to go straight into the sides on these because I got four of them. So I'm going to set it aside. Let's hit the next one. We'll get a lot on here. And as I've said many times, I, am not, I do not like rust buckets. But I like, I like my freight cars to stand out a little bit. I am not a, generally, I don't like too many of them to be fresh out of the paint shop. I like them to have a little bit of character. I think we use just the right amount on this one. I want to make sure it is all, it is not any dry spots. Get my brush strokes in the right way. Now, as you, you guys who weather rooks, you know I can go back later if I have a dull coat on this and dry brush this. And I'm, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. Set it aside. Let's go on number three. Now I noticed that some of these may have been dull coated. I think two of these had been dull coated when I got them. You know, they came from train show. So they are definitely not new, but I did wash them with I put them in the ultrasonic with dish soap and I've I've been finding more and more uses for dish soap in the ultrasonic in just like really giving things a good deep clean and it doesn't take the decals off of most stuff now if they were put on wrong by someone I would suggest not putting them in there these came from the train show they were dirty probably been on a layout for many years or just sitting in storage and they they had they had a pretty uh, pretty good coating of some dust that had really set up one neat thing is we're gonna have, we have four box cars that are essentially the same but none of their roofs will be identical Oh, let's keep them in the right order so I remember. Okay, this was one, that was two, and this was three. So now we're on number four. See if I can make it so I'm not pooling all in the same place. So I'm gonna... Okay, going back and forth like I'm doing right now, it's fine to get it around, but don't leave it that way because you're going to end up, you will end up with being able to view that side to side motion. And remember, I want to get off the brushing before it sets up. Because if it starts to set, every brush stroke will stay where you put it. And then you'll have a brush stroke there. You don't want that. There we go. That's number four.
Okay, let's go back to number one. That's number one. It is very close to being fully set up. I don't think it's going to run anymore. Let's hit, let's hit both ends. Now this is the one where we got to do the side. You know what I should do? Oh no. I should paint the white stripe on these because these are high cubes. I think I'm going to shade it first. We can always paint the white stripe. And the ends are ones, the ribs go horizontal. So I want to make my brush flow with that. And I want to get out of here as quick as I can. But don't let it pool in the ladder. Because it will really pool there. And I'm just going to leave it alone. Head on over to the other end. Oh look, we had some run in there. Some from the roof ran in the end. That's just fine. I'm going to tell you a secret. You can use, you can use alcohol to, to reconstitute this if you get brush strokes you don't like. You can use distilled water, which I would say is usually a little better. You can use 50-50. You can use 70-30. Whatever you want to do. I got a little spot here where it's pooling. I'm going to see if I can do a little distilled water. Yep, a little distilled water on the tip of my brush. And that little setup brush stroke there is gone. Okay, that's one again. Let's go to number two, hit all the ends. So in our system, once you've got paint and decals on, I shouldn't say our system, the system we are attempting to learn, the Citadel system, once you've got paint and decals on, you go to the shade step, which is what we're on right now. You can stop at the shade set after this and then move on and just seal it. If it looks the way you like it, stop there. And then you probably want to choose if you're going to dull it with a matte finish, like dull coat. Uh, I kind of like a satin finish sometimes. And sometimes I like a gloss finish. Sometimes I like my equipment to look as if it had just rained on it. Okay, that is number two. Let's go to number three. See if I can I'm gonna rest this down here because I'm shaking something fearsome in my hand. And if you've got, if you have that, you handshake. Uh, use a helper like a table. Once again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow it to pool heavily in the ladder. See how fast this is going? Look how many we're doing at one time. We're doing four at a time right now. And as I have said before, when you are doing something like this, each time you do a step, you get just a little bit better. That's why I like to say, let's do all the roofs. Let's do all the ends. And then let's do the sides. And we're going to do one side at a time on all four. Gives it a chance to set up a bit. And it really does not take much more time than doing one. Plus, as you get better, the whole batch turns out better than doing a single one. Not only that, I know a ton of you are sitting on a mountain of undone projects. Right, let's set a goal. If you're going to do one project, you might as well do two. And if you're going to do two, you might as well do three. 
I think three is around the optimum number unless you're going to set up the assembly line. And one of the, one of these days, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do, we're going to try to do something like forty at a time. Where we're just going to go down the line. We're going to have them set up in a line. We're just going to come back to them, and we're just going to keep doing the same process until we have them all done. And then you can accomplish a ton of work by doing that. Okay. All the ends and all the tops are done. And how many minutes have we been doing this so far? I'm not really sure yet. And we'll find out in a bit. Okay, let's go to number one. Now, the reason I'm only going to do one side this time is because I got my fingers touching the other side. Here's the tricky part. This is a waffle side. So some... Of the paintings got to go side to side and some's got to go up and down but most has to go up and down so we're going to get a bunch in here we'll start at the top and let gravity pull it beware the ladders it will pull there and beware the waffles it's going to pull there so i want to get the ribs if i can get this stuff alongside the ribs it'll flow Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have detailed this with the with the uh, paint marker. Yeah, we can do that after. When you do detail something, I wanted to take the silver paint marker and hit these rods here that hold the door shut. However, in this painting system, that is a step they call layering. Where you go and detail something, and that step does in this in the instructions comes after you have done what we're doing right now after shade comes layer okay now let's see if I can okay now I'm make sure that I'm not pooling at my ladders too much I want to make sure I am pooling in some of the recess details Okay, I'm starting to set up a bit. I'm going to take a tip of distilled water. I'm going to get her to start flowing again. Now let's, let, let's get some gravity going here. Now, having done this a few times, I know that in the door, the recesses will will soak up a lot, and you'll be able to tell. So, I'm not the best at doing this. There are modelers out there who are way better than me. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that on my block where I live which is a long block. There are like 30 houses if you go all the way around the block. I'd have to bet I'm not the best modeler on my block, and I don't even know if there are any other modelers. But I know there are a lot of people who do this. This is what the kids are doing. Little kids, too. So I met this guy at the store where they sell this, and every Saturday they have, they have paint workshop. And there's a bunch of kids in there. Well, I say kids. But oh, they're of all ages. They were working on their models. And there was this one young guy. He was, had some amazing modeling. I mean, it was shaded. It was detailed. It was, it was, it was fantastic. And I asked him, how do you do this? You know what he told me? He said, yeah, I don't, I don't really have time to do it the, um, using all the steps. I got to use, I got to use all the shortcuts I can. So I'm just getting too old to go through all the steps. You know, I've been doing this like 20 years. Wow. Wait a minute. How old are you? Because I'm 26. Can <laughs> you believe that? Oh, man. 
Now that's funny right there. That's hilarious. So I had heard about this, and I went to one of I went to one of these gaming stores. And if you if your train store is gone now, like many of them are, you need to look and search on that map for. Um, generally, the easiest way to find them is Warhammer stores, but they're not all Warhammer stores. A lot of them are game stores, and a lot of them are comic book stores. Because comic book stores also tend to have a lot of game players, and the games they play involve painting miniatures. And they... They're, um... Well, they are definitely younger than model railroaders in general. Uh, but they have some pretty... They have some etiquette. And some of their etiquette involves that they expect you to paint your your models. It is considered poor manners not to paint your models. And I, I was just amazed at what I saw for their the work that they did. So there was a there was a girl there. She probably just in her early twenties, and she she had out her models and she was painting. And she wrote down the formula for me. And this was in May of 2019. She said, and she goes, now this is how we do it now. She says, but a month from now, everything is going to change when they introduce the new new paint. I'm like, what? She said, this is, this is how you do it today. But a month from now, it's all going to be different. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And I was looking, at, and she was a good amazing amazing artist i have to say you know how fine scale modelers are good the guys who do tanks and, and airplanes and stuff their work is is detailed i mean they'll take a whole winter to do one model so she had a bunch of hers out there and uh, they were excited about citadel if you get there if you put the painting app on your phone you're going to find two columns under paint you're going to find the classic, which is what we're doing right now. And then you're going to find what's called the contrast. Contrast is all of these steps in one paint. Or it's at least these two steps. Base painting and shading in a single step. And I have already tried some. It's pretty good. I think for model railroaders, because we have a couple of intermediate steps that they don't have. And one of them is that we got to apply a bunch of decals. Um, for us, the classic method is is probably our way that will work for us because it, we don't want to we don't want to shade before we do our decals. We kind of want to do our decals at the factory new stage. All right, this one's a little streaky. I let it set up too much, so I'm going to take some distilled water and I'm going to scrub it just like that, and then I'm going to let it run. And I do not want my ladder to pool. Very good. Oh my goodness. We are now back to number one with everything but one side done. Okay, you see a little, I've got some pooling going on here. But I'm going to keep it. Can you see that? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it like that. Because when I'm done, I'm going to coat this. And I'm probably going to, to what they call layer, what we might call dry brush, or detail some of the details. And then it'll be all okay. And it will not look, see, I'm using green. It's not going to look like this thing is rusted out. The look I want is, is... This thing has been out in a winter. And it's, you know, it's been snowed on and melted in the same day. It's been snowed on and rained on in the same day. I have also noticed one other benefit to doing this, and that is that when I take pictures of these models, 
the pictures are more vivid because the model itself has more contrasting in it. <laughs> That's why they call the new paint contrast paint. This sets up contrast that your camera picks up. And your photos of models that have been shaded like this are, are much more vivid. All right, let's get that. Let's, let's make our logo a little bit wider with a little distilled water. At the top ridge here, if I've got a little distilled water on there, I can get it and and the oops and the shade will run down. One done. Number two, pretty much set up. This number two is a smooth side, so it goes way faster. But there is less detail for it to shade against. So here we want to be extra careful on the ladders here. Since they're the main detail, they're going to collect the most of, of the shading effect. The door, I want that shaded a lot. But I don't want the paint pool. And you should all know what I mean by the paint pool. Where it pulls at the bottom and then around the corners a little bit. That means I got too much on there. And there is nothing about doing this that will prevent you from, those of you that like to dry brush, that is your layer step. And that is the next step in this process. That's two done. I can definitely see on this one the dull coat effect. If you remember painting on dull coat, can you see in the reflection kind of the paint lines? And the dull coat effect, you know, it's something you learn. You don't fight it. You learn to work with it. If you remember using Walter's, or not dull coat, I'm talking about DDV. Do you remember Walter's DDV that you'd put on after you did decals? It was a heavy varnish. And that stuff, that stuff was so thick that it did hide the edges of decals of decals but I mean it was thick and you can tell if somebody really slathered it on you can tell those models right away just by looking at them and <laughs> it has a quite thick coating on it this is much thinner than that but you will still get a little of that effect and the idea is that that effect will be mitigated by you using Um, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to satin finish this. I might. I kind of want these all to be the same. Instead of, these are not ones that I want to really experiment on. I want to go ahead and, and make them match. And I'm thinking I might do satin. I might dry brush and do satin. I don't want them to be totally flat. You can't have everything be totally flat. Some I mean, of you guys get out and go way over the top on getting stuff totally flat. And remember what I said about the uncanny valley? Some things have to stand out. They've got to have contrast. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Did we do them all? We did. Okay, check this one. Got a lot of pooling going on this flat cider. Let's just take some distilled water. Knock off them pools. Knock off them pools. Right down to the paper towel. I got some pooling on the door. It's not too late. And Okay, if you, if you like, put this aside and come back tomorrow and you're like, oh, no, there's, like, like drip marks everywhere, break out your 50-50 alcohol, 
and you can and you can go ahead and you can basically you can almost start over it'll reconstitute this and you can still get it the way you want it but sometimes What you think looks like a mistake or, or, or what you think looks like bad modeling, that final finish either mutes that mistake or enhances it in an interesting way. So I don't always get rid of those because sometimes they just... They turn out and they look cool. Okay, let's check it out. Let's go back to number one. And you just the this is almost set up. If I put this at the drying station, not even five minutes and we'd be done. Okay, from back here. Are you seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Do they look fairly decent? Okay, I'm going to carefully close the lid with two hands really hard because sometimes the back part of the lid don't close. Then I'm going to get my brush in some 91%, get it cleaned off, 